It's your friendly neighborhood, Laser Lady. And if you've ever wondered how you can turn a signature or recipe, handwritten note, or even a child's drawing into something you can laser engrave, we are going all over that today. It's super easy and a free program called Inkscape. So even if you've never used Inkscape before, we are going over everything you're going to need to know on how to turn something like this into this. So let's get into it. The best type of drawing or handwritten notes should be a nice bold color that contrasts with the background well. It doesn't necessarily need to be black and white, but that does help a little. Once you have your image picked out, it's time to digitize it. If you have a scanner, that would come in handy. If not, no worries. You can take a picture with your phone. Make sure the lighting is as good as you can get it next to a window as best. Try out the flash function if that helps the contrast of your picture at all. We are not going for a pure white background. The focus really is just on what we want to engrave. Once that is looking good, let's get them on the computer. I'm going to edit these down to size with paint. You can also do this on your phone before you put them on your computer if you fancy. Time to open up Inkscape. And just so you know, I have a step-by-step -step guide on my blog, which I'll have links for below so you can go at your own pace. Start a new project page and go up to File and down to Import. Find your picture and import that in. I left the import settings at whatever the defaults were, so it's all set to go. You can zoom in and out by holding holding the control key and rolling your scroll wheel on your mouse up or down. To make your image smaller, click on your image once and when the arrows appear in the corners, hold down that control key again while you press and hold your mouse button to drag it in. To rotate, click your image twice. The corner arrows turn into curves and you can rotate your image to where you'd like it. If you hold down the control key when rotating, it snaps your image in 15 degree increments. We can make it the exact size we want later. So for now, let's just get it so you can see the image and let's turn this baby into a laser engravable file. While your image is selected, go up to path and down to trace bitmap. This will pull up a menu on the right hand side. Make sure the live updates is selected in the bottom corner. Now you can see this little preview. If your image is already pretty stark and contrasted, the preview should look pretty good already. If you have some thin lines, you might want to fiddle around with the sliders. What the program is doing is essentially tracing our image for us. Sliders, like speckles, will get rid of the little dots and the smooth corners slider will make our vector outline a bit more smooth around the edges. It makes sense. Once you think it is looking pretty good, click apply and it will generate the image over your picture. It's that easy. I had my son draw this one out for Father's Day with a Sharpie and a white piece of paper. And we go through the exact same process with the trace bitmap function. Things like this make a really fun activity for kids or anyone really. Seeing your art on a laser engraved thing brings a smile to anyone. Now to make the cut lines for our new vectorized images. For my grandma's signature, I want to make this an ornament. I have entire videos on how to make more complex shapes to laser cut, so watch those next. For now, let's make this ornament. I just make a circle with the circle tool in the left bar. To make it a perfect circle, hold that control key down when you drag it out. Then I make a rectangle on the top and drag the circle in the upper right hand corner down to make the edges rounded. Then I get two more circles on there. Using the arrow selection tool, I select the two smaller circles. I go up to the object drop down and down to align and distribute to open the bar on the right. I can then use the alignment tools to align the circles and rectangle together vertically. Select the outside shapes by clicking each shape while holding the shift key and not the smallest circle. I then go up to path and down to union. Then I put the signature and the ornament where I'd like it to go. Before you save your SVG file for your laser program, make sure your lines are all set. Go up to Object and down to Fill and Stroke to open up the setting on the right hand bar. My laser program likes my cut lines to be hairline, so I select that in the drop down. You can also choose Line Colors in the Stroke Paint tab. For the silly TIE Fighter my son drew, I'm just going to put an oval around that to cut out. I fiddle the image into place. Now I want to put a year on this. Put a date on anything kids do, I always say. 
Selecting the text tool, I type out 2025. You can change the text before or after writing in the text drop-down box in the upper left corner. I shrink that down just like we did at the very beginning with our picture by holding control and sliding in a corner. To rotate, just click two times and make the corner arrows curve and then rotate. Now it's time to make sure things are the size we want with the sizing box in the upper bar. Export these as SVGs or whichever file your laser program likes best. For the Father's Day gift, I'm going to make this a magnet. <laughs> After I forgot for a while, I remembered and flipped the image around because I am engraving it on the back side of mirror acrylic. This way, when seen from the front, it will be right side around. After it's done engraving, but before it cuts out, I went in there with a little bit of black acrylic paint and squeegeed that in with just some cardstock. If you give this a try, make sure you don't wiggle around that acrylic or the cut will be off. This is totally optional, but a great technique when you have a lot of little pieces that you need to paint, so keep that in mind. I also cut out a slightly larger oval from 1 16th inch plain black acrylic to attach to the mirror layer to give it some depth. As for the ornament, I engraved the signature on the one side of basic clear acrylic. I then used a bit of tape to flip it around and engrave the other side. The other side's a bit detailed, so I took the masking off before it engraved. I ended up finding a winter scene on Creative Fabrica to engrave on that other side. There's lots of resources on that website, so check it out if you ever get a chance. Now that everything is engraved and cut, Let's quickly finish up the pieces and see the final look. To finish up this magnet, I could use either this five minute epoxy or contact cement. I made a whole video on the best types of adhesives to use on mirrored acrylic, so definitely put that on your watch list. But spoiler alert, either of these will work. I decided on the contact cement to attach the mirror to the black acrylic and a magnet to the back of that. We'll need to wait a little bit for that to dry before I reveal it. While we wait, let's fill in the ornament engraving with a paint marker. I could have painted this when it was still in the laser too, but I probably got distracted. Either way, totally works. After a moment for that to dry, I used some heavy duty duct tape to get all the masking off. <laughs> a lot of Gorilla brand stuff going on. I'm not sponsored or anything. I just plain like the stuff, I guess. I still need to buff this to a nice shine and Novus number no. two plastic polish is of course perfect for this. It turned out so beautiful and shiny and it will remind me of my GNG for years to come. <laughs> now the big reveal for the magnet. Ooh la la, the shine of the mirror is a lot of fun and I just know this will make a great present for Father's Day. There are a lot of techniques to master on Inkscape, and once you get the hang of it, it gets easier and easier. If you're ready to learn more, then check out this video where we learn laser projects that everyone should know how to make an Inkscape. Thanks for watching and happy crafting!